he finished working, he stumbled across a specific Wikipedia page that honestly shook him to his very core. Jonathan Park is a Christian audio drama that is surprisingly still going on. According to their website, it's full of faith building and educational evidence for a creator. If your family enjoys imaginative and immersive stories packed with biblical truth, then Jonathan Park is for you. If your kids have never experienced Jonathan Park's it's supposed to be Jonathan Parks. That's possessive. Okay, whatever. <laughs> if your kids have never experienced Jonathan Park faith-building audio adventures, we want to highly encourage you to try these stories. We guarantee that they will ignite their imagination and equip them to defend their faith. While I was a kid, I never got the impression that these stories were defending my faith. It was just another way of looking at certain situations from a more biblical perspective, which is how I was personally raised. As an adult, I doubt that this audio drama has any sort of malice against unbelievers. It was just another resource for parents to teach their kids valuable life lessons of how to be a good person. I remember listening to it in the car as a child on the way to the children's museum. This was common in my immediate family since we grew up homeschooled, and my parents would take any opportunity to teach us things about life from different forms of media. While yes, visual media was the primary form of entertainment, this audio drama stood out to me since it was one of the only audio dramas I listened to as a child. Sure, Adventures in Odyssey is one if not the most popular Christian audio drama to date with various forms of media connected to that brand, but Jonathan Park was the more obscure version of that. Nobody I knew listened to it. I texted my mom asking where the old CDs were, assuming that, you know, they were still in my old parents' old parent. wait. I gotta rephrase that. <laughs> Assuming that they were in my parents' old basement. And while, yes, they were there for a time, they were not there anymore, according to my mom. I guess that's it. I wanted to look deeper into this audio drama since no one else has, and it was in my list of documentary topics for months. <sighs> then, I got a text from my dad. A picture of one of the Jonathan Park CD. I was so happy to see this image of a beloved childhood artifact. Now I can revisit yet another aspect of my childhood and see if it still holds up. First, it was Ohio Distinctive Software, then it was Studio C, and now we are going on a brand new journey. Not about games, not about a TV show, but an audio drama. <laughs> Before I could venture to my parents' house to retrieve said artifact, I did some research to see if this company was still around. Yes, they are, and they just released their 22nd season of the Jonathan Park Show, which means currently all the CDs together totals at $369.99. At one point in time, they were even on Spotify, but it got removed for some reason, which is really disappointing and means that the only way you can listen to these is to spend money. And since I don't have an extra $400 to spend on the whole collection, since I'm making about $5 a month from Patreon, hence my realization with my parents earlier, I could subscribe for $10 a month, which considering how long it takes me to make documentaries, I might as well just shell out the $400 at that point or wait about a week to get my hands on an original copy of the CD, which for archival sake, the more original of a copy, the better. It also seems like they are trying to convince people to go digital to quote unquote save money, which in reality, this company wanted to try to get more customers by switching audio formats. I mean, according to them, they've already sold over 2 million copies, yet don't care at all about their YouTube presence, considering there are multiple YouTube channels for some reason, both of which only contain behind the scenes from years ago. Well, it seems like you're gonna need something special to eat, something real special I, i'm thinking mac and cheese with the hot dogs mm -hmm. cut up into it yeah. <laughs> you want to serve their guest mac and cheese with hot dogs well sure i mean we go all out don't we one of which looks like the original channel since the original artwork is clearly in the thumbnail and the other channel is more recent and has the newer artwork which i'm not a fan of the new art style personally and i'm not sure why they changed the art style in the first place now in the past each jonathan park series explored all the wonderful evidence for the biblical account of creation we call those our original adventures 
In our new adventures, Jonathan, alongside his family and friends, are discovering evidence for the biblical account of history once more. But what's different about our new adventures is that you and your family will now discover and learn about the unbelievable archaeological evidence that lines up with the biblical account. The Dreamer's Tomb series is the first of many new series to come. It's an epic four plus hour journey across Egypt that will entertain, surprise, and might even shock you with the unbelievable discoveries that are bringing the pages of the Bible to life. Well, actually, the reason for that, and this audio drama's quote unquote resurrection, their words not mine, is because they got acquired by Wise Kings Media in 2014. Before 2013, Jonathan Park was run by a nonprofit that heavily relied on donations from its supporters. Hey, it's Isaac, member of the Creation Response Team. As many of you know, the Jonathan Park Adventures will continue on. And on behalf of my team, I'd like to thank you for your support, prayers, and generous contributions. Thanks to you, Jonathan Park can continue reaching people around the world with the powerful and exciting message of creation. Meaning that after a while, those funds dried up, especially since costs were high due to quote unquote, production, marketing, and administration. Weird how they don't say who the nonprofit was. According to this very page, Wise Kings Media, quote, aspires to provide entertaining and faith-building resources to more families than ever before. By faith, we have chosen to rely solely on the free market rather than solicitating our customers for money and competing against the overcrowded pool of donors that support nonprofit ministries. We are committed to carefully steward the resources that God has entrusted to us, and Lord willing, we will continue producing excellent faith-building products to the Christian community that glorify God for many years to come. So basically, they are letting capitalism fund their Christian productions. Personally, I'm all for them being open and honest with their goals. It makes sense considering they know who their customer base is. Now, after driving eight hours, here it is, a Jonathan Park CD. When I was a kid, I remember this series packaged in a white brick. But then my parents got rid of all those versions, which was technically the original version of the series, but hey, this is still technically the first version of the artwork, so like, I can't complain. This is the Copper Scroll, which is the eighth episode of the series. If we flip it around, we can see a brief synopsis of the plot, as well as the cheaper titles, since there are 12 of them, totaling to over five hours of runtime, as listed on the back. Well, I guess it's time to listen to this. This show took me three days to finish. It's a chronological series with a creationist perspective showing scientific evidence for creationism in this fictional series. Starting with episode one, every episode has a strict formula. Cold open, narrator pops in. About halfway through, there's a plot twist which leads to a commercial about the website, always ends in a cliffhanger, and finishes with audio credits as well as what the actual discoveries were that inspired the episode. This audio series is densely packed with observation, so it can be hard to follow at times, especially with multiple narratives happening in the same episode with multiple different characters. Basically, the Park family originated in New Mexico. There's a debate of free thinkers and creationists, which brings up questions to answer from both sides and doesn't shy away from the hard to answer questions, encouraging that it's okay to ask questions. The Bible's made up of fables and stories that existed long before. Oh, why do you say that? Come on, Jim. You've never heard the Bible's creation story was a ripoff of the Babylonian Enuma Elish, which was written hundreds of years before Genesis? No, I've never heard that before. Finally, the audio mixing is actually very well done with music, sound effects, believable voice acting, and localized character dialects, which makes sense because obviously they're in the desert. Episode two made me realize that it's actually kind of impressive how every single episode is exactly 25 minutes and 58 seconds long. And that this very investigative, dramatic historical fiction show has some pretty funny moments. The third episode further cemented that it's a chronological storyline and that there is always a setup for cliffhanger. I appreciate that they always end the episode with the original sources. Apparently there's a lot more to Jonathan Park than just an audio series. In the fourth episode, Jesse, Jonathan, and Dr. Park got kidnapped. And the only reason why I'm mentioning this is because one of the kidnappers kind of sounds like Pedro Pascal a little bit. Topics of Gentiles and cults pop up here, and an interviewer interviews Jim Brennan, which is a nice callback to the debate he lost earlier. 
It was at this moment that I realized if Indiana Jones was a Christian expedition, this would be that show. Episode five has Miles in prison from a previous season. And later, Jim Brennan encourages Jesse to go to a water fountain, but she refuses, mostly because that's how she got kidnapped in an earlier episode, which is attention to detail that I personally appreciate. This episode also explains how documents are handled correctly. In the sixth episode, they split off into two groups, and it's also revealed that the Brennan Museum of Creation is home to some of the characters in this show. Although, considering this is the eighth season, that's really not new information. Chapter seven has them reading from the Bible directly to connect actual locations to the Bible, which they do a lot, to find the treasure, leading to an ambush. The next major event was many years later when Jacob bought land in this area, the place where his son Joseph would eventually be buried. That's in Genesis 33, 18 and 19. All right. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram and pitched his tent before the city. And he bought a parcel of a field where he spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for an hundred pieces of money. Is this also the place where Joseph's brothers were herding sheep before they moved to Gaza? Were they sold him into slavery? Yes, that's right. At this point, I realized that each episode has two parts, totaling 52 minutes per episode. So far, this hasn't aged poorly whatsoever. Except they mention Israel and Palestine. Episode eight has a background on the scribes of the Bible. Uses a lot of stings to elevate the tense moments, which happens a lot. And one of the ads states that apparently you can buy building sets that are compatible to Lego. Have you ever wanted to reenact our family's adventures? Well, now you can. Introducing Jonathan Park building sets, coming soon at jonathanpark.com. These exciting building sets are compatible with Legos and other building bricks and are perfect for hours of fun and learning as you recreate the world of Jonathan Park in your own home. So visit jonathanpark.com to learn more. And I couldn't find it whatsoever. It's probably because I'm not a member of the Jonathan Park site. Episode 9 and 10 have the craziest scene of the entire show. There was a group punishment that happened to another camp member by burning their tongue with hot metal. This literally happened like four times in the show. But once that was over, I was ready for this to be over. Considering how many hours I've listened to it at this point. Chapter 11 was an important one. The main antagonist is finally revealed. Miles is one of the antagonists turned allies in the Jonathan Park lore. And this is the story arc in the show. The final episode, 12, I have a lot to say about. At the time, it was a bit slow previously, but I was back to being invested in the story. This show was a fun listen overall, reminding me of a combination of Indiana Jones, National Treasure, and Sahara. Out of the entire show, this was my favorite quote around the 18 minute mark. Ian wasn't following the rules of good archeology. span Like what? A person needs to perform incredibly careful work and needs the benefit of other experts as well. Unfortunately, Many Christians can be so excited to provide some evidence they think will prove the Bible. They take shortcuts in hopes of making some major discovery. But don't amateurs sometimes make important discoveries? Yes, they can. The problem is not excitement for discovery, but rather the disregard for needed disciplines to chronicle and establish authenticity with rigor. And we must clearly understand every site and artifact through historical, cultural, and scientific considerations. Wait. Christian? Ian is Christian without Christ. How did I not catch that before? Oh my gosh, the antagonist was alluded to this entire time. I mean, sure, if I ever have kids, yeah, I'd let them listen to this. And then I got to the debate. It was <laughs> fine, I guess. I wasn't too impressed with it. This debate was hinted at throughout this entire season. And once it finally happens, it's basically saying that there are skeptics 
excuses, and objections. And that those don't matter because creationists base their beliefs on the word of God. It's very clearly playing to the Christian crowd. Because of course it is. But it's not a good rebuttal. Because it is in fact a straw man fallacy. The CRT or the creation response team basically said, it doesn't matter what you think because you don't base your beliefs on the Bible. And to me, <laughs> It's a very weak argument. I don't know. I just feel like the argument could have been made in a more level-headed approach than just doctrination. This entire show, they cite actual archaeological discoveries and then connect it to the Bible, which was interesting to see, but they don't even do that in the debate. So what was the whole point of the research Dr. Brennan was doing for this debate in the first place? Other than that, though, it's a pretty good show. Yep, pretty good. Wait, so who originally created Jonathan Park? So not only was Jonathan Park owned by Vision Forum, but it actually had four different owners in its entire lifespan. And to make this a bit easier to understand, here is a graph I drew. This was really fun to make, honestly. During the 90s, the original owners were Pat and Sandy Roy, who worked for the ICR, the Institute for Creation Research. Its parent company, in a sense, was established in 1970 by Henry M. Morris and was called the Creation Science Research Center, which had its home in the Christian Heritage College, which is how ICR originated. The ICR was, quote, a creationist apologetics institute in Dallas, Texas, that specializes in media promotion of pseudoscientific creation science and interpretation of the Genesis creation narrative as a historical event. The ICR adopts the Bible as a literal documentary of scientific and historical fact, as well as religious and moral truths, and espouses a young earth creationist worldview. It rejects revolutionary biology, which it views as a corrupting moral and social influence and threat to religious belief. Which after listening to this CD, yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. Between the 90s and the 2010s, the website for Jonathan Park looked like this, which is a lot more what the ads sounded like than the modern website we have now. The original site had a lot more personality, and it was actually fun to discover what was on this site. You can even meet the characters in the form of a blog post. I've never been on this website, even as a kid, so this is honestly my first experience with it, and man, I love the aesthetic of this. There are even games on this site, puzzles and coloring sheets mostly, and while I was excited to see what Flash games they have, it's actually just PDFs that you can fill in, which makes sense considering the demographic of its listeners. The second owners were Vision Forum. Vision Forum was a nonprofit with President Doug Phillips. Something that was really funny that I was not expecting expecting is that on the external links section of the Wikipedia page, I found a defunct website that redirects to a shady campsite. So that was something I was not expecting. So yes, they shut down in 2014. After Vision Forum closed its doors, the original creators were looking to fund the show again to get it back on its feet. But first, they had to buy back the rights. Sure enough, they raised $155,000 to save the show. The third owners were Creation Works, aka Pat and Sandy Roy, again which when i kept researching creation works all i got was creation quest which is an organization with the mission to share the gospel on the website's about section it also lists that pat knew ken ham since they both were a part of the icr's radio sector which is an interesting connection because ken ham was part of that creationism versus evolution debate like a decade ago anyways the creation quest url has been used for like two decades and since they acquired jonathan park after vision forum went extinct in 2014 and the creation work website was around from 2010 to 2016 creation works eventually redirected to jonathanpark.com making creationworks.net no longer available the fourth owners were wise king media now we are at the modern day version of the show it's honestly hard to track down who runs wise king media and all we literally have is a password protected site and a soundcloud it seems like about eight years ago is when they picked up jonathan park that would mean it was around 2016 which does does line up timeline wise with the blog post. Seems like Wise King Media wanted audio dramas to be the face of its company rather than the Wise King Media brand. And honestly, I get it because it means more brand recognition for them. But you know, I started to think 
why was this company super private? All the other ones haven't been. So I dug further. And now, it makes sense. The ICR believes that creationism is a science, which no, technically it's not. Creationism is based on a religion, so therefore it's not a science. Listen, I'm not a scientist. I wouldn't know. And I'm not going to pretend to know. All I know is the Bible is based on Jesus Christ and the Trinity, not science. Regarding Vision Forum, do you know why they shut down? Because Doug Phillips confessed to let's just say a lot of inappropriate behavior regarding marital situations. There was in fact a lawsuit against Doug Phillips due to alleged abuse, which of course Doug did not confirm, although he did say there was a quote, inappropriate relationship. That was why they eventually shut down in 2014. Also, Vision Forum had some very questionable beliefs. First of all, they believed that women are property according to biblical patriarchy where quote women really cannot be trusted as decision makers and also quote unless a daughter marries she functionally remains pretty much the property of the father until he dies oh gosh that's not okay quiverful beliefs also makes a cameo here which basically means that big families are a blessing from god and birth control is frowned upon obviously it is an individual's choice whether or not they want to have a big family or use birth control i just don't like that it's tied to a religion that right there is what irks me about it with creation works aka the roys while i can't confirm this i would not be surprised if pat and sandy roy still held the beliefs of the icr and my evidence evidence for this are the nine seasons of Jonathan Park, where it's very clear to me that they treated creationism as a science. Last of all, Wise King Media. They aren't super public, which makes me a bit concerned, but I couldn't find anything about the owners of the company. Considering all we know about the previous owners, that doesn't surprise me. Literally in the blog post that they posted about Jonathan Park, they didn't even name who was the previous owner, which is a little bit suspicious. And also the bio of the Wise King Media paid for this new Jonathan Park reboot reads out of fear. Seven out of every 10 Christian kids are leaving the faith after high school. Yeah, probably because of religious trauma. <laughs> what? No, that's crazy. This new company sees atheists as a greater assault on Christian beliefs and that it's all Satan's fault. I hate this narrative that all atheists are evil and all Christians are good. No, that's clearly not true. Listen, I'm all for religious freedom. What I'm not for is fear mongering to take advantage of other people. This is how you separate art from artists. You look at the art they make, you look at the people they are, you look at the beliefs they have. Separating art from artists is all about if you enjoy a person's work of art and acknowledge the kind of person that they honestly are without shoving anything under the rug, you can also acknowledge if you like a person's art. There are countless artists whose works of art people have loved, but once they fall under scrutiny, then people feel justified to crucify said artists. Artists. I can acknowledge that I liked the Jonathan Park audio series, and still do to an extent, but I don't agree with the beliefs of some of its creators. And that's okay. I believe that art is like a picture. It's a product of its time. The art itself doesn't change. The only thing that changes are the people who make the art, and the people who see it.